Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the mighty Blackfoot Nation, you know, one of the most respected First Nations people in North America. They have a long history of great people and traditions, so today we're going to take a look into who they are as a nation and kind of learn a little bit more about them. So, where did the Blackfoot people and the tribes come from? Well, the Blackfoot people, they had a lot of land for their people before the arrival of settlers, before disease came in like smallpox and before all the battles with the Cree tribes. You know, they covered a vast area of land ranging from Edmonton all the way down to the Yellowstone River in Montana, also expanding into the the western part of Saskatchewan so a huge area of land that they had so if you were to drive from present-day Edmonton all the way down to the Yellowstone River it would take about 11 hours and 57 minutes or 727 miles of land so right now they are currently situated for the most part in southern Alberta and northern Montana the area of tries is now known as the Blackfoot Confederacy and if you were to translate that in their language, the Siksika language, it would translate into the real people. So the Blackfoot Confederacy, you know, they're made up of the Kainai, the Siksika, the Pikani in Canada as well as the Blackfoot Indian Reservation in Montana. So the Blackfoot Nation, you know, they're really known for their brave, strong people. They painted their teepees with beautiful art, and they were known for creating a lot of strong allies. They were also bison hunters, trout fishermen, they hunted deer, and they made really good use of what is now known as the buffalo jumps. You know, when they had their lodges kind of all put together, they had about 10 to 30 teepees per community that ranged between 80 and 250 people and this ensured that there was enough warriors in the tribe community to protect against any attacks. The Blackfoot people are also very well known today for creating the men's chicken dance that what we're gonna get into here. So a very strong nation and very very beautiful people. So how did they get the name Blackfoot or Blackfeet? Well it was said that they they painted their bottom of their moccasins black and other tribes would recognize them as the Blackfeet people. Another story that was told was that the Siksika people would walk through the ashes of fire in the prairies which would leave you know the, the bottom of their moccasins black. So what happened to them in the past? Well you know they had a lot of enemies you know surrounding tribes being in the prairies the early uh, 1800s, late 1700s, you know, they, they battled with the Crow, the Cheyenne, the Sioux, the Shoshone, the Flathead, the Kalispell, the Kootenai, and the Nez Pierce people. But by far their biggest enemy that they had was the Iron Confederacy or the Nihiaopwat, meaning the Plains Cree. And they also had other enemies, you know, the U.S. armies. In January 23rd, 1870, the U.S. Army attacked one of the Blackfoot Nation's tribe with over 300 of them who were sleeping. So the sneak attack resulted in close to 200 people dead, including women, children, and elders. And that was known as the Marias Massacre. And this was all about the same time that the smallpox disease came in and started to severely affect the Native American population. And from here, the white people started the Buffalo Wars, where they started to kill off all the buffaloes because they knew a lot of the First Nations people relied on the bison and it helped force all these tribes into treaties. One of their leaders that they had, and one of the most prominent leaders they had was Chief Crowfoot and he was very well known and his cre his uh indigenous name sorry uh translated into father of his people he was very instrumental in the negotiation of treaty 7 the blackfoot people are mainly a part of the treaty 7 in canada and he talked a lot about peace and reason he also sat with many well-known indigenous people uh, Chief Sitting Bull, who was very well known in the Lakota people, he 
came in and spent some time with Crowfoot's people, and Sitting Bull was so impressed with Crowfoot that he adopted him as one of his sons. During the Northwest Rebellion, the Canadian militia and the Métis people were fighting against the armies here in, in Canada, and Crowfoot decided not to be a part of this conflict because he knew that you know, he would end up losing a lot of his people, and he knew that the future didn't look too good unless they started to create some allies. But he did take in some Cree refugees into his camp and he let some Cree people come in and take refuge uh, within his tribe. Later on, one of the Cree uh, chiefs came to his tribe. His name was Chief Palmaker. And uh, Crowfoot loved Chief Palmaker and took and adopted him as one of his sons. So the Blackfoot people had many, many traditions. They were very spiritual people. They had many ceremonies, which still live on today. They relied on the buffalo for many tools and lodges that they created. They went on vision quests. They carried sacred bundles. They had the sweat lodge ceremony, the sun dance ceremony, the chicken dance. But they always lived in the way that the Creator came first. They were society people. And some of the societies that the men uh, were separated in were the Bull Society, the Horn Society, Crazy Dog Society, the Little Bird Society, Braves, and Kit Foxes. Some of these societies are still active today and you still have to have these spe special qualities to be a, a part of these groups. Qualities such as you know how you carry yourself, your behavior, your deeds, and your accomplishment. The Blackfoot language, also known as the Siksika language, is a branch of the Algonquian language spoken by over 8,000 people and has over four dialects, and three of those dialects are spoken in Alberta, Canada. There are many apps that you could get today if you want to learn some of the Blackfoot language, and some basic languages like how to say hello in Blackfoot is Uki. And one of the most famous battles, if you were to look up the Blackfoot people, was the Battle of Belly River between the Cree and the Blackfoot people. So the Crees, what happened during this time, smallpox were coming around and a lot of tribes were being affected by the disease and the Blackfoot people were one of the tribes that were becoming weaker from the disease. So the Cree wanted to take advantage of the situation. So what they did was they had Chief Big Bear and Little Pine gathered their warriors to raid the Blackfoot people and the Cree sent an advance party out to go and scout and when they did they found a group of Pigans and decided to attack instead of go back to inform the main group of Cree warriors. Soon after that uh, Blackfoot, Blood and the Pigans were notified of the attack that the Cree uh, were, were doing and they sent reinforcements over, which resulted in devastating the Cree Wars with up to 300 Cree deaths. And this happened in present-day Lethbridge, Alberta area. A year after this battle, the Cree and the Blackfoot made peace. Uh, Chief Crowfoot was very instrumental in creating this peace and took in Chief Palmaker as an adopted son later. The chicken dance that you see in the Powell Trail as well is a very, very popular dance. It was said that a lot of this dance originated from the Blackfoot people. Also, some of the origins can be traced to the Crow people. And there's a really unique story that came with the chicken dance, how um, it came into a, a dream after hunting the prairie chicken, and the prairie chicken let him know that he got killed during a ceremony, but he wasn't in a chicken form, it was more like a human spirit form and told him that you had to continue on the ceremony and that the chicken was going to teach him the songs and the dance to, to continue on the story. Really great story, the full story is kind of on our website at palatons.ca and nowadays you know the Blackfoot Nation is a really awesome area to go to and visit, they're doing really well. Uh, you can visit the Blackfoot people by attending one of their ceremonies, such as a Native American powwow. They have great celebrations 
where they invite all the tribes and the people all over the world into their reservation and they host you with great song and dance. So you can go to the powwows and the Kainai Blood Reservation, the Siksika Reservation, or the Bikani Reservations. They also have great museums to visit, uh, the heritage sites such as the Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump and the Blackfoot Crossing Historical Park. And you can listen to some of their great singers like the Blackfoot Confederacy Singers. So that's a little bit about the Blackfoot Nation. We encourage you to, to keep on studying them, to check out our website uh, at palotimes.ca and to learn a little bit more of these great nations. And thank you for watching. We will see you again.